People are demanding more from life, and many of the old scripts they inherited are outdated and bring nothing but anxiety and stress. Does this sound familiar? Individuals in the world itself are experiencing a tremendous shift in energy and consciousness, and while unsettling at times, it can be the ride of a lifetime if navigated properly. That's where this show, Mind to Heart, with me, Craig Richardson, carves a pathway from your mind to your heart to activate that innate compass to overcome whatever life sends your way. So won't you join me for this powerful, inspirational, and fun experience? And let the journey begin. Hi, my name is Craig Richardson, and welcome to Mind to Heart. In this show, we take a journey from our logical, critical mind to the powerful heart center where real transformation occurs. My guests help us understand our journeys by telling us about their paths and lessons they learned along the way. For anyone who's around in the 1980s, it was an action-packed and wild decade in many ways. I was in college from 1981 to 1985, and many of my contemporaries headed to Wall Street after graduation. Money was made hand over fist and people partied hard. While the 60s was more known for pot and LSD, starting in the late 1970s and throughout the 80s, the drug of choice was cocaine. It fired people up, gave them incredible feelings of confidence, and it was deadly. Len Bias, one of the greatest prospects since Michael Jordan, was drafted by my Boston Celtics in 1986, and he was dead within 48 hours. An all-night party at his former college, the University of Maryland, turned tragic when he ingested a lethal amount of cocaine. The culture reflected these times with movies like Scarface and later Wall Street depicting this era. One of the most popular shows of the day was Miami Vice, which glamorized this high-paced, luxurious, and cocaine-infested life. My guest, Pastor Craig Brown, saw the realities of this lifestyle. In the early 1980s, he worked for one of the largest drug dealers on the East Coast. And not surprisingly, with access to this amount of product, he too became a user and then an addict. He saw the depths that addiction can take you. And thankfully, through the grace of God, he also discovered the road to recovery. He's been clean for 35 years now. And for the past 22 years, he's dedicated his life to helping others who have fallen into the abyss of drug use and addiction. He uses the tenets of Christianity and the saving power of Jesus Christ to help people turn their lives around. Today, he is a recovery pastor and has helped rescue more than a thousand people from the depths of hell. He's also released a book about his journey and others he's met and helped along the way. The name of the book is Stop Hiding, Start Healing, which we'll hear more about later in the show. So now I'd like to bring in today's guest, Pastor Craig Brown. Pastor Craig, welcome to Mind to Heart. It's great to have you on the show. Frank, thank you very much. Uh, it's great to be with you. Well, uh, I guess we should, you know, like my show is all about journeys. So uh, why don't we start with yours and, and uh, just a little background on where you grew up and, you know, what your family like was life and all that, all that. Why don't, you, why don't we start there at the beginning? Sure. Um, I was born in Washington, D.C. I've lived in the area my entire life. Went to high school in, uh, in D.C. at St. Albans. Uh, my dad was an Episcopal minister who uh, had, a, had a congregation in Mount Rainier, Maryland, uh, was which we, we, in my early days, that's where I was born in D.C. and, and lived in Mount Rainier, uh, my youth. And then we uh, relocated out to Montgomery County in Rockville uh, and have, you know, established pretty deep roots over the last, well, I just, uh, just had a birth, well, I have a birthday coming up, but been here all my life. And uh, so I grew up in the church. I grew up with a dad that was a minister. Um, if you know any preacher's kids, uh, we have, depending on the denomination, you know, uh, we have quite a reputation. And uh, I did really well at that. Um, I have two older sisters. I, I, have to, uh, I have to just introduce them. Excuse me, I, I'm actually a judge's kid. So uh, my father was oh, a judge. Okay. So it's the same okay. thing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but my childhood, as as I shared in the book and as, I, as I've shared, you know, uh, just in my testimony, um, you know, we had a fairly dysfunctional family. My dad was somewhat of a narcissist. Uh, he struggled with his own demons. Um, he, you know, was a very, he, he could be a very angry uh, person. What I saw from the pulpit versus what I saw behind closed doors were two different 
people. And my sisters and I received the brunt of that. My mom was the typical pastor's wife who had to make the Brown family look really good. And we had to make dad look really good. And that's just a ton of pressure to put on someone, um, you know, in our youth. And um, I really, you know, our identity was, was him and his, you know, uh, role as a minister. And that was our identity as a family. And we didn't uh, discuss emotions or feelings. Uh, everything we did was wrong. Why could, you know, and the comparisons were, you know, over the top. And it was just a very difficult environment. Of course, you know, when you're in it, I didn't realize it at the time, you know, and I didn't realize it at the time. I thought it was a normal, yeah, normal family life. Until, of course, you get on the other side. And as I've done over the last 35 years, you know, looking back, dealing from a lot of different things, um, my sisters and I all agree it was uh, how do we survive that? You know, how do we do that? Well, how? Uh, you develop coping mechanisms. You develop right. coping skills. And I learned how to deal with pain, and shame, guilt, and blame, and failure. I learned how to escape that. And as I've titled my book, I learned how to hide from that. And it's not, you know, we all do it. All of us have developed these without even knowing uh, at a very, very early age. And I did. And so my emotional well-being and, and you know, I didn't have a relationship with my, with my dad. Unfortunately, he was just always busy. And I could count on one hand the number of father son times we spent together. And I'd have fingers left over. I mean, we, and that's, and just, that's so important, isn't it? That that time. And and I, I think the other thing I wanted to just reiterate, because, you know, it's a little bit like with the judges. I know we were laughing in front, but it's the same thing. You know, you get Judge Richardson and, and you know, you have to have that perfect facade. And it's, I think when you're a child, it's it's really difficult when it doesn't match up. Right. Because yeah. you're, you're going public and everybody's saying, oh, what a wonderful person you are. And everything. And then you're you're like, yeah, it's a little very unsettling, isn't it? It is. It's just a lot of pressure. I mean, I have a ton of friends. I mean, I've been here again. I, uh, my dearest friends I, I've had since, you know, eighth grade. And um, we all we all come from different experiences. And as you all know, in this region outside the D.C. area, inside D.C., uh, just the the identity uh, of success and the pressure and, you know, um, it's just hard for families. I mean, uh, you know, you and I aren't the only ones. I mean, it's, it's rampant in our society overall. And if you, if you, it's one thing, if you had a relationship with your dad and you had a foundation and you had support and you had nurturing and you had love and you had instruction and a guide and a mentor, but when you don't, you're going to find it somewhere. You're, you're going to look for it and find it somewhere. And that's, I found it in going to the party. And so and tell me, dad, tell us about how that happened. I mean, I, I know from the 80s that the drinking age was 18. Probably people are getting in more at 16, sure. 17. Is that, did yeah. you start just by going out to the bars and stuff? Uh, you know, in, just in high school, I was, I was a really good athlete. Uh, everybody told me I was, but I didn't believe I was. Um, should have gone on to play college basketball. I didn't. Um, but, I, you know, we go to a party every now and then and, you know, drinking kegs and everything else around around this area. I mean, it was, you know, it was the thing to do. Uh, it was natural, you know, it invites everybody. I didn't have any self-discipline, nor did I have any self-control. I just went. I just, you know, I, I drank it. I, I didn't use drugs until I got to college. Um, and that's really where the pit of hell began because I just spent my entire freshman year at the party and I dropped out of school. Where, where did you go to school? Ithaca College, Ithaca, New York. In New York, yeah. Yeah. And so I I, I, I did, you know, I instead of going to class, you know, and, and I, I should have been a walk-on. Uh, my friends were just absolutely disappointed in me. And I was, you know, I was disappointed in myself, uh, mostly. And that's where it really begins, at that threshold where you just feel like a failure. So you live up to it, you know, and that's, that's exactly what I did. And I got back home. And I just uh, took a job, uh, various jobs, but then I ended up working in the bar business. And lo and behold, one bar I was working at was owned by the biggest co biggest cocaine dealer on the East Coast uh, at that time. Um, I kind of knew about it, but it, you know, I didn't think much of it. Um, 
but we're I'm working in this establishment and this major, major drug trades going on. I mean, this guy was, you know, there was a lot happening and I'm not going to name names or, you know, share too many details other than he, he has since passed away, but you know, every, I mean, Capitol Hill people were in there, uh, you know, TV folks, athletes. I mean, it was just, and as a 19, 20 year old, you know, you're like, you know, oh, wow, you know, this is just amazing. And so I got sucked up into that drug life. I mean, I did some low level dealing, you know, uh, but not to the degree that he was doing. And uh, then I, you know, I'd be using cocaine. Uh, we'd be up for days. Uh, it was just an unbelievably dark, depressing, painful uh period and i just you know i operated in that i didn't know anything different uh, my family didn't really know much because i hid um but my network it, all my friends all my friends are, are at duke tufts uh you know brown uh williams and here i am you know i just feel you know and i'm i'm looking at them and they had their career i mean they're attorneys now and they're physicians and they're one's a judge and you know and i'm looking at my you know i'm just looking at myself as a complete failure you know in this in the so midst did you not of this, you did not go back to ithaca did you not go back to no, ithaca no i didn't no no i didn't i didn't i uh craig i i can't say it's a regret necessarily uh if and this is where the spiritual component comes in. If the Lord had wanted to open up a door, if if the desire and the passion is on my heart to be able to do that, go back, you know, and fulfill, uh, get my degree, then I would have done it. You know, I would have done it. And it's really not been something that I, my life and my training, uh, everything has been uh, from the deepest pain. Everything I've been through, everything I am today, is a result of that pit of hell and my deepest pain and recovery and healing over the last, you know, 35 years. Um, 22 of which I've been, you know, serving in the capacity I am and have been. So, but it was a lifestyle that uh, as you, you lend bias. I mean, uh, my, we have mutual friends. When Lenny died, we were just absolutely crushed. Uh, the big, yeah. you know, all the. What a talent, what a talent. Uh, unbelievable. No, oh, it's just horrible. I'll never forget the day now that we got the news. And I've I've played ball with a lot of uh, the former players from that era. And, you know, um, yeah, it was just tragic. Uh, but then again, it, it was, uh, you know, it happened, but everything, you know, it's, it just took over the city. It took over the entire I, I think in a way it also woke a lot. It also woke a lot of people up too. I mean, it was pretty big. I mean, it, it, every, because, because everybody, there wasn't that high visibility of uh, death until then. Oh, oh, he was uh, one of the one of the yeah one of the first yes absolutely athletes, and I mean he was it you know as far as uh, a ball player I mean he was just absolutely uh, talented, um, and that would that would have been a wake up call for some, but it also can act as a catalyst for someone to go and continue on their journey and hide the pain shame yeah, that's never going to happen and he did no, so much and... it's such a cycle oh. Craig yep. Well, well it's speaking of cycles, and I, and we're, I want to get into this more. Uh, we're going to take our first break, but when we come out of the break, I want to talk about the cycle because you can't start recovering until you hit bottom. And so, when we get back from the yeah. first break, I want to get sure. into that that piece with you. Uh, your website is craigdbrown dot com, and mine is craigerichardson dot com. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah. I just want to put that out, and you can find information about his book. So let's uh, take a break, and we'll get back on the other side. The truth is funny. Shift happens with monthly guest host, Karen Benton. Tune in for powerful conversations about health and wellness. Karen brings unique insights rich with humor and science to her discussions with experts in medicine, movement, psychology, spirituality, and so much more. Don't miss Karen on The Truth is Funny every third Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about Karen, visit KarenBenton.com. Get empowered. Transformation Talk Radio. Let's face it, you don't love 
your wrinkles. You probably work out, but you have been skipping face day. Join Colette Marie Stephan for daily face yoga. You'll learn to activate and train facial muscles and reverse the visible effects of aging. Forget about expensive procedures and products that don't work. Live virtual classes every day at 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. Pacific. Sign up for face yoga with Colette. Visit thetruthisfunny.com. TransformationTalkRadio.com. Let the journey begin. Tune in to the show Heart Change Consciousness with me, Dr. Trish DeRocher, as stories of inspired activism come to life. Listening to conversations with your favorite authors, change makers, and many more who practice inspired spiritual activism and transform vulnerabilities into sources of strength. Let's be inspired together through my show, Heart Change Consciousness, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hi, welcome back to Mind to Heart with your host, Craig Richardson. Again, my website is craigerichardson.com. My guest today, and I'm delighted to have Pastor Craig Brown, who prior to the break explained how he had gotten wrapped up into that crazy world of the 80s and cocaine. And um, you can reach him at his website at craigdbrown.com. But Pastor Craig, as I said, before the break, we kind of got into the craziness and in the, in the, of the lifestyle. But Take us sort of from that point until, you know, on the way down, because you can't go up until you hit down. So why don't you why don't we pick it up there? Well, yeah, I mean, I uh, first uh, the uh, first chapter of my book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing, is, is uh, on purpose. And that is uh, until the pain is greater than your fear, you'll never you won't change. The pain has to be greater than your fear of changing. And it was uh, after that period when I was in it. Um, and, and here's the spiritual component that a lot of people aren't aware of, Craig, and that is the Lord's hand is on, God's hand is on every single one of us. So many people I talk to, they look back and go, I have no idea how I got through that or how did I ever, you know, survive that or this. You don't realize that, that, that the Lord's hand is on us and it's up to us to acknowledge that, accept that and allow him. To work in our life right even though i grew up in the church i knew nothing mm-hmm. uh, i knew nothing so uh late 80s or thereabouts i was you you probably know this area uh, dewey beach uh, Delaware. Yep, sure. i was coming back i was coming back from there after a weekend uh and it was on my way back up route 50 and i had this um uh, it was uh really an epiphany i I, I I almost talked to myself and I said, if you don't change, you're going to end up dead or you're going to continue on this life of destruction. And that was a defining moment in my life because the pain level had gotten to the place where I realized that I, I've got to do something. Something's not, this is not my life. And a lot of people when they are in it are looking out and saying the same thing. What am I doing here? What am I doing with my life? But they're scared to de- death to change because they don't know what process to take. They don't want to reveal themselves. They don't want to be transparent. They don't want to expose what they're doing because they want to. They want to continue to suffer and hide. But I realized I ca- I couldn't anymore, and I began to extricate myself from that whole environment. And I didn't go to rehab or I didn't go. It was uh, miraculous. It was just a ama- I I made a decision that I am not going to do that anymore. And it was took you know weeks and months to, to extricate myself from that. And I began to get my life back on track again. And, you know, things began to change. But Craig, I was still miserable. I was clean. I, 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 I quit. I had quit. My friends continued, but I had quit. And, um, but I was still miserable for like seven years. And what do they call that a dry drunk, you know, when the person, uh, you know, they, when there's they, a number of different names for it number, but I was still miserable. You, you know, I had, yeah, no cause you're not dealing with the other one. 
Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. had no mission and purpose. I had no mission and purpose. I had no goals. I, I was still, I was still just floundering. I was working. I was, t- you know, but I was just, I, I, I just didn't have that purpose and I'm floundering and the pain level was still there. I, you know, you know, I wasn't in that environment anymore, but, it, but I'm still, uh, my, from the trauma and everything I'd been through, I hadn't processed it. I hadn't done anything about it. And that's the, that's the difference, Craig, in recovery. You can get clean and sober and that's great, but that's the byproduct of doing the work. And doing the work is healing from all the pain, what caused you to get into that mess, make those poor decisions, the depression, anxiety, stress, shame. If you don't deal with that, it's going to linger. You're going to find it, something else held, to, to medicate. Yeah, yeah. And so I held on to that. I held on to it. And believe it or not, I got that phone call that none of us wanted to get that my dad was dying and my sisters called me and I rushed to the hospital and I stood at his bedside and he was, and he was in, bleeding internally. And he's very, he was, he just hit a period in his life where he, he had one issue after another. And I stood there. And again, I said earlier, I didn't really have a good, loving, caring, nurturing relationship with him, but he's still my dad. Right. And yeah, I stood sure. there by his, by his bedside in, in the intensive care unit. And, my whole past came back rushing before me. And I said to myself, I said, you know what? My dad's going to die. And I've, been, I've done nothing with my life. I, I'm just a complete failure. And Craig, that was when the pain was greater than my fear. The very next day, and no one led me. No one told me how to do it. No, nothing. I just said, God, I can't do this anymore. I mean, I just can't do this anymore. And I, you know, I need you to take away the pain. Just come into my life, take over my life, be my, I didn't know the term, higher power or come over and be my savior. I just cried out to the Lord and I haven't been the same since that day. And did you ever, did you, did you ever have a conversation with your dad or did you bring closure at all? Or is it just, that was, that was, um, uh, well, my life changed and everything changed and we never, Honestly, Craig, it's sad, but I, I can't ever recall him putting his arm around me and saying, hey, son, let's talk about what you've That's been right. through. He never asked me. He never, son, how can Some I of that, that generation wasn't capable of it, I think. They weren't. No. Uh, if you knew his background and his, it, what his upbringing, and that's the part that you don't get. And that's the part that you're not going to accept because you're going to, I'm going to blame him. And I blamed. I blamed everybody. Right. We all do. Right. Yeah, can't be, <laughs> asked, that. Can't be somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not my fault. Oh, no, it's not my fault that I'm <laughs> using drugs and making a mess of my life and getting in car wrecks and throwing up blood. And, you know, that's not, oh, no, that's not my deal. Until we take responsibility, man, nothing is going to change. And that day changed my life forever. And I just, I began to work my recovery. I began to admit, I began to process, I began to heal. I, I began to be restored. Everything started to happen and fall into place on that day. Everything. You, since. Did you get into, did you do a 12 step at all? Or did no, you find no, it? not until I, not, not until I started ministry and, uh, you know, have been doing it for 22 years. <laughs> yeah. I had no, That's interesting. Formal, yeah, no formal anything. You yeah. know, well, uh, you're and, clear, and very, you're clearly led. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it's my, my grandfather um, in the 1930s, and I, I think there was probably alcohol because, you know, we were Boston, Irish, English. That, you know, oh, sure. as I yeah. said, in Boston, you don't have to be Irish to be an alcoholic, but it helps. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, but he was English to put the old old line and he got into something called the Oxford Group in the 1930s, yes. yeah. which yeah. which if people don't know, it was the precursor to AA. In fact, Bill yeah. Wilson, the founder of AA, was in the Oxford Group. It was a little more evangelical. They were doing a lot of other they things. Were. They but my were. grandfather, I, I was cleaning out my folks' house after my mom died a couple of years ago, and I came across a newspaper from that Oxford group, and there was my picture of my grandfather. He was the Army Reserves, and he had a quote, something to the effect of, only God can change people's lives. How do I know that? Because he changed mine. And I found that very fascinating, and then I found his, discovered his Bible. I still have it behind me. Oh, that's and great. He wrote in the, in the margin. So he, you know, I think that's a very powerful, and again, this was a group that, he was sort of a, on the organic founding part of that, but I, but uh, so it sounds like even though you, you know, you ultimately discovered 12 step, but you kind of discovered on your own, your higher power of God kind of brought you there originally. He did. And he will. It's not, I'm not, I am not unique here. 
for every one of your listeners, whoever is struggling, whoever is dealing with this and they continue to hide, uh, there is a process and a way for you to be set free. There just is. And we, again, if we're, we are so afraid of taking that next step, you know, but if the, again, if pain level is greater than that, that fear, you are ready. And, and I was, and so I, I, you know, again, I, I just began to immerse myself. See, you know, the Bible is a recovery manual. Okay. The Bible is a life manual. So many people are so intimidated by it, but it is true. When you find the right passages for, and every passage is is specific for whatever you're going through in your life. You cannot find anything you're going through in your life that is not written, right? So that is a good guide. That's why I'm a big fan of Christ-centered recovery because he's the only one that can change, fix, heal, and restore. This is your grandfather experience. Uh, yeah, he, he did that. He went through the Bible and he, he yeah. underlined things and wrote notes yes. about how it affected him. Absolutely. That, and that is, that's the answer. That is the answer. And, you know, and as you mentioned, the Oxford group, it was very faith-based, very faith-based. But over the years, that had, that fabric has been worn. And, and it's like higher power is, you know, for your choosing. But I'll make no apologies. I'll make no apologies based on my own experience, my own testimony, my own miracle. God is the one that did it. He is the only one that did that in my life, changed my life. And I... And I, I can't be more grateful than I am today that he saved me because I was in a bad, bad place. Well, interesting, because Bill Wilson, actually, Carl Jung, the famous Swiss psychiatrist, had a mutual friend of Bill Wilson's who was also in, it had hit bottom with alcoholism. And Carl Jung, in a letter back and forth to Wilson about this third person, Carl Jung basically said exactly that. He said, this person's beyond hope. The only thing that can have, help him is some sort of, I can't remember the term he used, but some sort of spiritual enlightenment or awareness or awakening. So, you know, that I think that was, you know, around at, at that time. In fact, Carl Jung's father was a minister as well. So, you know, that that that's definitely part of that um, that whole concept of bringing the higher power, spiritual God, Jesus. I mean, that it, you can't do it by yourself. And I think that's what you discover when you're hit rock bottom, isn't it? It is. Absolutely it is. But it's, uh, I mean, look at your show, Mind and Heart, right? I mean, uh, for anybody struggling with addiction, you've got to change your thinking. You have to change your thinking. The mind and the heart are totally equally up. They're, they're totally connected. And when you're, you know, and it's all about reprogramming. You know, we talk about basketball. Let's pivot. We're going to, you know, pivot and we're going to go in this direction. We're going to, it's about complete change, total life change, starting with the way you are thinking. And we've all, when we're in the midst of a pit of hell, we develop a false reality, totally false reality. And it's not based on truth. When we are, when we begin to be set free, all of a sudden, it's a brand new uh, reality, brand new way of thinking. And in turn, it heals the heart. Your heart begins to be transformed. What was once hardened, hurt, in pain, full of shame, all that through God's help is going to be stripped away. It's going to be stripped away. And as, it, and as that happens, you get a new clear thinking, clear purpose, clear mission in your mind and the way you go. And you change your mind. You change your behavior, you change your circumstances, you know, yeah. mind, behavior, circumstances, and heart. And well, that's, a, that's a beautiful miraculous. segue, I think, to our next se segment, because I do want to get into how you, and there's that archetype of, of the wounded healer, and that's what a lot of healthcare people are. If you ask, yes. you dig the surface on any healthcare person, they've come out of the crazy, you know, backgrounds. And, oh, absolutely. And yep. So when we get back from the break, I want to, I want to get into that, how you turned your own pain into, into helping others. And, and, and okay. the, so we'll, we'll pick that up on the other side of the break. Again, uh, Pastor Craig's website is craigdbrown.com and mine's craigerichardson.com. And we'll see you on the other side. finder of lost things exploring your superpowers of trust healing and transformation with me hannah belton when my brother christian went missing i completely denied my grief we can either transform 
and transition, or we can stay stagnant. This podcast will uncover the process that Christian and I went on to find the lost things, him, and to find the parts of me that were missing. And there's things that are missing in you that prevent you from letting go, whether it's a person, a dream, a lifestyle, that process of trusting and finding the lost pieces and and integrating them. That's where you get your sustainable transition that will carry on. Tune in every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. You can find me at HannahVelton.online. The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. If you're like I am, it can be rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, don't you? And it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance. From the quality of that inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. On the Christine Upchurch Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Join me, Christine Upchurch, every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on KKNW AM 1150 and Transformation Talk Radio and learn new ways to step into your vibration of change. Hi, welcome back to Mind to Heart with your host, Craig Richardson. Again, you can find me at craigerichardson.com, and I'm delighted to have with me for the second half hour here my guest pastor, Craig Brown. Uh, His website is craigdbrown.com. Pastor Craig, before the break, we were talking about how you came out of recovery and started peeling away your pain. And then, as a lot of wounded healers do, you went in and helped others. And in doing so, I'm sure you helped yourself. So can you talk a little bit about that transition and then how you got into helping others? Yeah, I did. Um, yeah, I, early on, um, I just had this, uh, um, desire. I mean, well, recovery is built such that when you go through the 12 steps, the 12th step is all about giving back. Right. I mean, that's just a, a principle for life you know you've been through this now don't hold on to it you know give it away you know share it encourage support pray for you know help others um and i wasn't necessarily following that mold but like you have a calling i had a that was a calling for me to set to to be able to give back uh, my pastor asked me to start a ministry called celebrate recovery at our church um 22 years ago and it's a formatted ministry based on, you know, uh, the Beatitudes found in Matthew uh, and the 12 steps. And it's just a Christ centered recovery ministry. And the Saddleback Church in Lake Forest, California formatted it, put it together, launched it, and it's now all over the world. So he asked me if I would start that, uh, knowing my testimony, right? He, mm-hmm. he knew me well. And I said, absolutely, and, uh, without hesitation. And so that was, uh, I'd had the calling before that you know, to give back. And I was, I was serving in various capacities. I share a story in the book. It's kind of funny of one of my best friends now, but I confronted him because every time he came to church, I smelled alcohol in his breath. And I tell the story in the book about, you know, I felt impressed. The Lord telling me, you know, go confront him, love him you know, <clears throat> lovingly, go, go do that. And I was like, Oh, well, and, <laughs> you know, you know what happens with disobedient Bible, not things don't happen well. So, I did. I went to his house and I got there and he was, he wasn't there. I'm like, Oh, good. So I left little did I know I'm about to pull off my exit to go to my house. And my cell phone rings. He goes, Hey, I, I heard you came by. Come, come back. And I said, okay. <laughs> now you're like, now you're like, said, the whale. Sure. you're not going to get yeah. away with that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure you want me to come back, but uh, the timing couldn't have been better anyway. So I went back and I sat in his living room and I said, um, you have a real issue with alcohol, don't you? And I just floored him. Mm. And it was uh, one of the first, you know, not the first, but it was one of many experiences leading up to starting the ministry 
that the Lord put me in somebody's life or asked me to help him. The Lord, does, that's what God does. He takes wrecks like me mm-hmm. to be able to help other people. He, he takes wrecks like me and builds them and, and, and heals them for his purpose to go help. I mean, I'm a firm believer in that. That's, that's happening worldwide. Not, nothing I've done. Uh, it's been done for years. So, so anyway, I, that was a funny story, but uh, that's kind of, you know, a, a precursor to me serving now for the last 22 years in Christ centered ministry. And yeah, I'm just curious, did he, how did he, because some people get really oh, angry. Well, there's, there's uh, generally you're going to get two reactions. One of remorse, uh, kind of a grief and sadness or the other anger. He didn't really have either. He got real quiet. He's a big guy too. I'm six four two thirty. He's about matching <laughs> me, right? And I'm thinking, uh, you know, I didn't think he was going to come after me. But um, a couple of days later, he goes, "You got a, you got a lot of nerve, man. You got a lot of nerve coming to my house." And 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 you know, and I said, "Well, take it, take it any way you 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 will, but I love you, man." Uh, I, you know, I was sent here to, to care for you, help you, and I'm there for you. And I will be. And he went on a journey. Um, you know, I was used um, in a good way, I hope. But uh, he's one of my best friends now. And he's uh, gotten his life back on track. You know, wasn't it wasn't instantaneous. He had to go through a few things still. But he's a he's a wonderful guy, just a wonderful guy. And he's been clean and all that stuff for a long time now. So, um, so I've been serving and that's in the, in that I've been flowing in that stream, Craig. I mean, I, you know, a lot of different, and I wasn't, you know, I, I, I never set out to, um, to do any of it. I just, uh, it, it was absolutely positively natural and it's just a, you know, a, a God given, um, opportunity to, to just give back and make it hopefully make a difference in people's lives. And that's what really, after 22 years, prompted me to write the book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing, because I did it myself. I lived every chapter and more. And uh, I was just prompted to, I'm not, a, I don't consider myself a writer or an author, but, uh, you know, God does amazing things with or, ordinary people. And I just, not that this is amazing, but so I wrote the book and um, based on experience and where I've been and where others can be. My, my passion really, Craig, is to help people get out of the pit of hell or if they're in it uh, or to avoid it rather, or if they're in it, keep their stay much shorter than it needs to be, you know. And, yeah, and I do think there's a lot more awareness about that. I mean, I think AA had its own thing and in the 70s and sort of, you know, there was the Oxford group, but people didn't talk about things like that. But I, I really do think one of the positive transitions in our in our lifetime since the 80s really is that there's a lot more willingness for people because you said you talk about shame all the time. And, and that's such a powerful motivator to keep people quiet. Right. Comes from the and, pit of hell. Yeah. And I think that's that's almost worse, isn't it, than the actual and then ironically or, or sort of diabolically, you you go back to the source that put you there in the first place to continue to self-medicate. You know, that's why it's a spiral downward and you end up having to do more to get the same feeling. And, you know, I remember, uh, you know, I'm a big Boston fan, as I, as I mentioned. And so another story we have, you know, I don't remember Derek Sanderson, who was a he played. Uh, he was a winger for uh, for the Bruins back in the heyday of the 70s. And, you know, I think it was maybe I think Bobby Orr found him under a bridge in the Ponset. Uh, you know, he had, it was, uh, I think it was, uh, he was crystal meth or something else. It wasn't, but still, and you know, Derek has a wonderful testimony. He wrote an amazing story and Bobby Orr, who's to me, my childhood hero was the one who literally yeah. lifted him up out of the depths of hell. Yeah. You know, and he got him, not only did he help him and get him on sober, but then he got him a job and he ended up, he was calling the Bruins game for about a decade. So yeah. it does take a special person like you sometimes to walk in there and, and, and be willing to do that. Doesn't it? Well, you have to. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, you, uh, you're very kind. I'm not special, but it, it, you have to be able to ask to, well, the Bible is very clear about confronting lovingly, confronting, you know, uh, with a biblical br- blueprint, not to be intrusive or like you have all the answers or I can't fix anybody. I'm not going in thinking I can fix anybody. People can't fix people. God is the only one that can change, fix, heal and restore. Right. Mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. He's the only one that can do that, right? Now, he has physicians and therapists and counselors and others that are of a network, which people need, right? People need a network to get well. Um, 
But you mentioned shame. I, I, I focus on that a lot of the book because it is the, it is the, it comes from the pit of hell and it is the one uh, shame holds and keeps people, real good people in bondage. Um, well, all right, let, let's, let's quick Bible story. Genesis three. What happened to Adam and Eve when they were exposed? What happened? They felt shame yeah. and they yeah. hid. <laughs> yeah. Shame. And they hid, right? Yeah. From God. Craig, it's been going on forever. You know, yeah, it's been going on forever. Well, right? it was killing, and, it's killing me. I was, excuse me, I, I, I was trying to think of that pic. I saw that there, and it was Mono, Monroe, Mono or Mano. There's a picture where there is a very powerful picture where they're, where they're leaving the Garden of Eden and they, the, the looks on their face when they look back on, I, I can't remember what, I, you may yeah. remember that thing. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, it's it, it, it's something in us, and it's so controlling and so powerful, and 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 really, I think the only way to get to it is 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 what you did is just to you know. I think that's the whole thing about AA, right? You know, say you walk in there and say, you know, I'm Craig and I'm an alcoholic, right? I mean, you, you, there's no hiding. You're not you're not hiding anymore. And, there's and, no and hiding. Even, I think by doing that, don't, don't you give away its power? Uh, not immediately. Over time. Over time. Craig, I know a lot of people that have been in recovery for a very long time and, and shame continued, not, not maybe to the degree it did 10 years ago, five years ago, or last week, but it continues to wreak havoc to a degree, but not a great degree, but, it, you know, and God, and really, you know, the Lord is the only one that can really, truly see when you let him in that heart, as you, as, as you well know, when you let him in that heart of yours and that shame is um, kind of like a label. It's been posted on that art. You know, it's been posted there. And it's a, and labels are really hard to get, you know, to take away. But the Lord's the only one that can really do that. When you allow him to be able to do that, it will diminish over days, weeks, months, and years as you continue the process. You have to do the work. You know, you have to do the work. Uh, and you have to put in the effort. You have to get to step one and say, my life is unmanageable. And I, and I can't control my tendency to do the wrong thing. And I've tried to control it. You know, we're all, when we're in the midst of it, we're very controlling. Mm -hmm. we're, manipu we're manipulative. We lie, right? Anything, the energy we can put into hiding, you know, whatever we need to do to hide it. And that very same energy and effort, when you put it into your healing, oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, Craig. When you put that same energy that it takes you to hide, put it in your heel, you'll be set free and you won't know what hit you. I, well, I, I think I think that's a great uh, segue because when on our last segment, I want to talk specifically about Stop Hiding, Start Healing, the book that you've written. I okay. know you've covered some of it in there, but I want to you know, sure. get get to that and. And, you know, a little bit more of these same concepts. I do I do completely agree 100%. That only God can change the heart. And sometimes he leaves a little bit in there just as a reminder. I mean, it's my, my you know, my dad worked a lot with uh, mental health patients. And he said that they would, you know, get off their meds and that, you know, think every, you know, they would be on their meds and think everything is great. And then they're like, you know, oh, know. so know. It's, 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 I do think that, you know, it's a little bit like Achilles heel, right? You gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have that reminder there because, you know, True. it kind of keeps you humble too. So when we get back, um, we're going to talk about Stop Hiding, Start Healing uh, with Pastor Craig Brown. Again, you can get all the information about his book and, and him on uh, craigdbrown.com. And my website is craigerichardson.com. And we'll look forward to hearing about the book on the other side of the break. When was the last time you had that feeling that you knew something, but you couldn't explain how you knew it? How powerful would it be for your life and business if you could consciously tap into that magic within you? What if you could remember that there's something supernatural about you? Tune in to Absolute Alignment with Christelle Biga when success feels easy. Every first and third Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific, 4.30 Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Learn how to lead a happier life on Miles to Go with Brittany Miles. How to lose to gain it all. 
Join Brittany every second and fourth Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Listen as coach and healer Brittany Miles share stories that teach you about surrender. For more information about Brittany, MilesToGoCoaching.com. Caring for someone with a life-altering diagnosis? You are a care hero. Navigating the unfamiliar options can be overwhelming, but you are not alone. Tune in to A Cup of Comfort with me, Trish Lau, twice monthly on Transformation Talk Radio. Let me guide you through your care hero journey by providing actionable information on how to care for a loved one in need. For more information about me, visit trishlaub.com. That's trishlaub, L-A-U-B as in boy, dot com. Juggling life's relentless demands can leave us unbalanced and restless. Do you feel stuck in the overwhelm? Diane McClay is a personal empowerment coach, author, and compassionate storyteller on a mission to boost you into balance and help you move forward with passion and purpose. Get unstuck with Diane on The Diane McClay Show every second and fourth Friday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information about Diane, visit DianeMcClay.com. Hi, welcome back to Mind to Heart with your host, Craig Richardson. Again, you can find me on craigerichardson.com. I'm here in the last segment with my guest, Pastor Craig Brown, who has been providing amazing information about his journey from the depths of hell, as he puts it, as addiction to cocaine, and then now coming out the other side and and not only helping himself, but but also uh, helping others. And in addition to doing a ministry for 22 years, uh, he is just released a book, Stop Hiding, Start Healing. So I want to spend the last uh, minutes that we have here, Pastor Craig, talking about that. By the way, you can find him at craigdbrown.com. So why don't we pick up with the, you know, I know a lot of what's in the book is what we've covered, but why don't you give us a little background about the book and, and you know, what you're intending to do with it? Uh, my prayer is, Craig, that it will, you know, that it will be included with all the different resources that are out there as a, in a book form and on the web site um to um make a difference in someone's life um and be be a resource for change be a resource for uh awakening enlightening uh be a resource uh to help that person that's in that really dark place or that you know whether it's addiction shame it doesn't have to be just addiction a lot matter of fact a lot of people enter into recovery not just uh men I can speak about our ministry. Two out of three come because of pain, you know, pain, not just addiction, uh, but whatever you're struggling with. You know, see, we're all in recovery from something. All of us are, right? Um, and it doesn't just. It's and a lot of people think the stigma of recovery is that it's just for the oh, it's for that alcoholic or that you know drug addict, and it's not. Recovery. It, the Bible is very clear about you can recover from anything. And it's generally that one thing or that two things that are really uh, keeping you from all that God wants you to be. There's something there that is blocking that, that is hindering you. And a lot of times it's pain and shame and guilt and of the past, pain of the past. So I, I was prompted to write the book based on just my observations, right, over the last 22 years of uh, Christ Center Recovery. Also my own story, uh, you know, not in its complete entirety, uh, but a lot of my heart. I, I, as I said earlier, I've lived every chapter and mm. every sentence in this book and more. And I just wanted to share that and offer it uh, to anybody that may be, may be struggling. Now, the title is Stop Hiding, Start Healing. And all of us hide. All of us have something to hide. All of us have you know, things we prefer just not to share with anybody. But a lot of times those are the things, maybe bitterness, maybe resentment, maybe jealousy, maybe failure, uh, whatever failure in marriage, uh, divorce could be the abortion from years ago or something like that. But people are using, you know, could be pornography. Pornography is a major, major issue in people's lives. It really is. And, and it's one of the most hidden, okay, sexual addiction, pornography it's one of the most hidden 
drinking, um, you know, is uh, socially acceptable. Smoking cigarettes, so, socially acceptable. Acceptable. Marijuana is becoming socially acceptable. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's it's a gradual process. Wherever you know, people want to legalize drugs. Everything's you know, the filter is being stripped, and everything's becoming quote unquote socially acceptable. But it's not. You know, God has a very very uh, uh, defined way to live. And the opposite is, is sin. Let's call it what it is, right? Um, but this book is designed for anybody, you know, anybody that is going through or struggling with pain of the past or any of that, and they continue to hide it. And I, I have, I've, we've served thousands of people over the last 22 years. And those that stick with it and work through it uh, have all come out of hiding, you know, and, you know, stepping through the door on that first night takes a ton of, ton of courage. Yeah. And it takes a ton of courage. And uh, that is stepping out of hiding. You're entering an environment uh, where you will be loved, accepted for who you are, loved unconditionally, helped. uh, And and we're not there to fix. We're there to help and support and pray and, and give resources and encouragement and share hope. And that's what the book's about. You know, the book is. uh, You you hit on something I think is very unconditional love and i think that the, the the one of the most insidious or the most insidious part about shame and guilt is that you feel unlovable isn't that it isn't oh that absolutely you, absolutely and it's like i don't want that I, you know i'm not worthy of that and i think when you have christ's love you know that's overwhelming yeah that's really people, i think really really where it started to be right well that's what i share in the book about why we hide because we don't feel good about ourselves you know, we do not feel good about the person we are inside when we're struggling. We just don't. And we wear a mask. Well, Craig, one of the best places to hide is church. Because mm. you go over Sunday, you look good, you dress up, you go and Check say, hi, hi. Yeah, like me. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 what's going on? Nothing. How you doing? Good. You know, especially us yeah. guys, Craig. Hey, how are you? Yeah. I'm good. Oh, coffee and donuts. Yeah, doing great. Yeah, hey, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah just you know, hockey yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how about that game last night, man? And that's all. And that's us. You know, yeah. whereas our wives or the, you know, the women are just, you know, so, you know, they're, they're embracing and they're, you know, uh, they still hide, but not like yeah. we do, you know, us yeah. guys, I mean, we have to put on a show, man. We got to put on the mask, make sure we, you know, we're, we're okay when we're not And churches is, is uh, it's rampant. People go there to hide rather than heal. And I've seen it. And that's really was the catalyst for me sharing and writing the book. Um, if you only knew. Whoever's listening, if you only realize that when you come out of hiding and begin to heal, your life will be, will be never be the same, and your marriage will never be the same. Your relationship with your kids, uh, your workplace, your career, your mission, your purpose in life, your healing, your heart, and your mind never be the same again. And it, but you have to take that first step. And that's a hard first step. Well, why don't, why don't you just quickly just say what is it? Because I know there are steps. You had yours. You're in the car. You had an epiphany. You know, the people, you, the other, you share the example where you basically put the, the guy's nose in it. And he, you know, you have a drinking problem. But, but what, what have you seen for those people that are, you know, pretty scared? What, what is typically the best first step that, that you've seen? Or is there is there such a thing as a best first step? Well, the best thing about this, uh, the silver lining in, in COVID this past year for people in recovery is that they don't have to go to a building. We've been meeting online virtually for the past year. And they can sit in their home on their own, private. Uh, in isolation, should they so choose, and tune in and not say not, not even put their face on video, right? They right. They don't have to put. Yeah, they don't have to show their face. They don't have to do that, and that's been extremely helpful. But it's also very hurtful, because I'm a firm believer, Craig, that healing happens in circles. Mm-hmm. When you get in that small group and you sit across from someone else and you get to see them, look in their eyes, and you get to hear their heart and their story, and it's there you realize you're not alone. And my message to everyone listening, those that may be struggling, um, is that you're not alone. You have a group of people that are there in recovery places. And I, I can be uh, I can help any of your listeners if they want to reach out to me. They're on my Facebook page, Stop Hiding, Start Healing, or the website you've, you've mentioned, or the book website, Stop Hiding, Start Healing Book dot com. Um, and I'll sh- I'll I'll you know, be able to share resources or other places where you can go if you're not here locally or geographically, if you're in a different area. But I'd love to be a, a, a help to anybody, any of your listeners that may be struggling. Reach out to me anytime. 
Um, but it's about that first step. And it's the first step that the best first step you'll ever take in your life in that where you can step out. And here's the thing, um, because we're in the midst of our pain, shame, guilt, addiction, whatever that may be, we naturally isolate and we are very, and, and the other drawback to that is that we've had parents and other people that have just beat us over the head, trying to fix us, trying to control us, trying to manage it, where all you want to do is find the right person, place, environment to go heal. Well, that is Christ Center Recovery because it's safe, okay? Because we have a high regard for confidentiality. Mm-hmm. You come as you are, there's no condemnation, and you will be loved unconditionally, loved unconditionally for who you are. Because that's what we're called to do for you, right? God's very clear about that. So if you're if you're um, hesitant about entering into, I totally get it. Because I was right there with you. I was well, I, right we, there. We have a little less than a minute left. And, and I think that that's very important. And I think that your testimony and the testimony of millions of other people, I think is starting to break that barrier down where people yeah. are starting to come out. And in the last... 30 seconds ago, do you have any, I mean, you've given all your websites, Craig D. Brown.com is one I've been giving out. Any final words to our listeners here? Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, and that, and I'll finish with that first chapter. When the pain, when your pain is greater than your fear of changing, you are ready. You are ready to, ex- to experience a miracle in your life and healing and restoration but you have to take that first step. You have to find that environment. And you and I, Craig, we can help them do that. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. It's a wonderful message, a very inspirational uh, journey that you've been on and you're helping everybody out there. And I really, you know, God bless you in, in, in your work, Pastor Craig. And I really appreciate you spending an hour with me. And thanks again. Craig, I've loved every minute. Of it. Great to meet you. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for listening to Mind to Heart with me, Craig Richardson. My path has led me from the Protestant and Catholic churches, as well as studies in alchemy, mediumship, Eastern philosophy, and most recently, Edgar Cayce and transpersonal psychology. As an intuitive life coach, I am ready to guide you to an amazing life. For more information about me, visit craigerichardson.com. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.